host for Wood Academy TV on Amazon Prime. And today, I'm here on Microjig's Facebook channel doing a live event. We're going to talk about some of the cool ways that you can use Microjig's dovetail clamps. Now, if you've been following along with Microjig's website recently, you know about our 360 sleds, you know about our uh, <coughs> 360 assembly tables and things like that. It's all pretty well documented, all very popular stuff. But today, we're going to talk about some alternative ideas that you can, hopefully, that we can give you some inspiration with. Now, before we get started today, I want to let you know that for those of you who are here with us live during this live broadcast between now and 5.30 Eastern Time on July 20th here, there's a special code that you can find in the chat section here on the Microjig Facebook page that will allow you to buy two pairs of clamps and get our router bit for free. That's a $30 value to you. It's a great benefit. But for those of you who are going to watch this after it's live, that deal's not for you. It's only to say thank you to all the people who were here or are here during the actual live event. So with no further ado, let's get started. The first thing I want to show you is a little clamp station that I set up. Ooh, a little dusty. So this is just a piece of plywood with some dovetails cut in it to hold my clamps. And of course, I'm using a French cleat system, which I've had on my wall back here for about six years now. But I can make these up as many as I want and I do four at a time because it's a nice convenient size and I can store my clamps so that they're right here whenever I want to use them. So that's a pretty cool way to store your clamps. You can make something like this that goes in between a pair of studs if you have a garage or an area with you know, open studs on the walls. That piece of plywood could easily um, pocket screw in between a pair of studs and you could have your clamps hanging up that way. And it works just as well for the wood handled clamps, the molded handled clamps, and it's no different for the new AP style clamps. So this is a pretty cool way to store your clamps. And this basic design can be used almost anywhere. You can mount it directly to a wall, you can use a French cleat system like I've got here, or you can put them in between studs. Anywhere you can tie in that little piece of plywood, you can hang your clamps. Now you may have noticed I've got a pair of sawhorses in front of me. This is one of the really cool things that we figured out about the clamps early on. These are just standard 2x4 sawhorses. They've got the metal brackets that you can buy at your home center for under $6 or so a set. But I put dovetails into the 2x4s that make up the top of the sawhorses for a couple of reasons. One is, if I need to cut a plank, I can lay it across my sawhorses, get my clamps down on it, and now I can work on this piece without worrying about it skidding around, moving, or tipping over on me. I can cut it, I can route it, I can do whatever I need to do with it. The clamps instantly hold it in place. So that's pretty useful. Let's take it to the next step. I can take another pair of 2x4s. I can put the dovetail groove on the ends of those. Now, we can set our clamp this way. And we can actually start to create a little workstation for ourselves. There's one. Put another one on here. Fortunately, I have lots of clamps hanging around. I love these clamps. I've been using them for a couple of years now, since they, before they first came out, I helped Microjig Beta test them. And I've got probably about 14 pair. And sometimes that's still not enough. All right, so now we've got actually a work area. So, I can take a piece of plywood, put it up on there, and either work with that the way it is, or 
we can throw in a couple more plants. And here I probably don't need four. I can just have two, just enough to hold the thing in place. And now we've got a workstation. So I can create a place to work anywhere with some sawhorses, a couple of two by fours, and some dovetail clamps and a sheet of plywood. This, would, this is awesome for the uh, job site, or if you're working out around your yard, it's a really easy way to start building up your repertoire. Also, if you have the cheap folding saw horses, the plastic ones that you can buy at your home center, they usually have a notch in them for the two by fours to fit into this, to, to do this sort of thing with. And again, if you notch your two by fours, put a groove in for the dovetail clamps, then you don't have to worry about how to clamp things to that. You've got your clamps built in. And by the way, if I use the AP clamps here, that wouldn't have been a problem. They wouldn't have dropped. Let me show you. Great features about the AP clamp is this little spring piece between the arm and the bar that holds the head wherever I put it. So where these clamps can drop down when you're messing with them, the AP clamp stays where I want it until I tighten it back up. That's one of the things I like about the AP. All right, let's move on to the next idea. So now we've got a workstation. Let me balance this up a little better. What happens if I want to use my, let's say my miter box on here? My hand miter box. Well, I could put it on here and get some screws and try to screw it onto whatever I'm working on, but that's going to tear up my plywood. However, when I take my stationary tools, like my miter box here, and I screw it down to a piece of scrap plywood, and then I put a pair of dovetail grooves on the underside of the plywood. Now, anywhere I want to use this miter box, I can just set it on, grab two of my clamps, I'll even do it on this side so you can see it. I can slide the clamps underneath here, and whether it's my workstation here, or my workbench, or a countertop in my home, Anywhere I've got a flat surface that I want to use my miter saw on, I can do it by just clamping it on here. It's seconds to set up and use, and I don't have to screw into or figure out how to get individual clamps onto all these places. I can just put a couple of grooves in the bottom of a piece of plywood, and anytime I want to use this setup, it's ready to go. And it's just about all of my um, bench top tools are done this way. My hand miter box here, I've got a dovetail jig that I've got set up the same way, and even a small vise mounted to a piece of plywood with a couple of dovetails underneath. Mount that on your bench, dovetail it in place, clamp it in place, and now this vise is free to use for metalworking or whatever I want to do without having to drill and mount it to the surface that I'm working on. So it's a great way to set up and break down temporary workstations quickly and easily. Now, for those of you I see that there's comments um, in the chat section of our Facebook Live event, and I'm really glad you're all doing that. Um, but obviously, I can't really pay attention to that and do the presenting here. So Morgan Hofstetter, the wood sorcerer from Microjig, he's the guy that's on there talking with you. He's got the answers to any of the questions that you may have. And feel free to uh, chat away while we're, while we're going through all of this. Now, one of the things that you may have noticed on our clamps here that we're working with, some of them have this green pad on it. And some of them have the factory yellow pad. This is our new X pad. This is something that came with the AP clamp out, and now you can buy the X pads in a four pack. 
So this is now available through Microjig on our website. It is should be getting out to retailers, but that may be a little bit slow at this point, but it is available on our website. This is a pack of four of the x pads And the x pads are really fun because they give us some interesting possibilities. First of all, they slip over the yellow pad on any of our clamps. So this is the wood handled version, of, original version of our dovetail clamp. This is the molded head version. That's the one that's available now for our standard clamp, and that fits on there. But it also comes with the AP clamp. So these are available for all of that. And what's co cool about them, the reason we call them the X-pad, the pad has an X pattern here. One side is a V-groove that allows you to hold dowels and other round or odd-shaped stock without it rolling out from under. And then the other side actually allows for when you apply pressure with the clamp holding this way, it not only pushes down on the part, but it actually will push the part sideways, which can be used for clamping panels together when doing a glue up. So that's kind of a cool thing. Uh, but that's our new X-pad, wanted to introduce you to that. But now we're gonna get back to working with our clamps. All right, so we're gonna get the clamp back in place so my workbench doesn't fall apart here. So you've seen me uh, putting the grooves into the fours to create the workstation we've got here, but I was also playing with, and this is something that may interest some of you, I was also playing with making risers to go with a chop saw station where the risers could be set out on wings and we could actually clamp to that. And what I did in this case was took some pine, I cut the dovetail groove in it, but I also put a three, eight, uh, three quarter groove top and bottom, which allows me to create an I-beam here and although this one is about five inches top to bottom, I think that's what I figured out I needed for uh, my chop saw from the base to the table of the chop saw. This height here with the plywood could be anything you want it to be. This gives you the ability to create hold downs and lifts and other clamping uh, mechanisms of any size that you want to. And they're relatively, relatively easy to build and of course you can always add your dovetail clamp. I love the dovetail clamps because anywhere I can plow the dovetail groove, I can add a clamp. I don't have to worry about buying a T-track or whether this gets chewed up and I throw it out later. It doesn't cost me much of anything to create this. It's made out of scrap wood or even if it were virgin wood, it's not a lot of cost there and I'm not paying for the aluminum T-track to go in here, which can be fairly expensive. So this is another aspect that you should be thinking about how you can create anything you want to use your dovetail clamps. Now one of the things that I've been playing with over the years is corner rounding jigs. And there are a number of these already on the marketplace, but one of the things I like about this setup, I've got a half inch radius here, three quarter, one inch, inch and a quarter. But before the dovetail clamps, let me see if I can get this out of the light a little bit. Let me kill that. Yeah, that's a little bit better. So half inch, three quarter, one inch, inch and a quarter. So if I've got a piece of stock and I want to round over a quarter on it, like this one, I can choose which size I want to round over, line it up so that the edges align together, and now I've got to clamp this in place. Now before the dovetail clamps, this jig would have had to have been wide enough so that when I use the clamp to hold it on, the clamp was far enough away from my router so that it didn't, the router base didn't hit the clamp before I could make my corner. But with dovetail clamps, I don't have to play that game. Here, I've put a groove on each side, or along the center of each side, so that I can now line this up 
on my stock where I want it. Slide the clamp in. And just make sure that the sides are aligned. Now I can run my router right around there. Now I'm not going to actually run the router, but as you can see, I've got it set up. I can come in, work my way around, cutting that corner off, and come out. And you'll notice that when I created this, I took the time to cut away this section, leaving these for bosses. And the reason being that I didn't want any risk of my router bit encountering the metal of the clamp. So with this setup, the bit starts here, comes around, and there's a block to protect my router bit and my clamps from hitting each other. You don't really have to do that. You could make this just a square piece and round over the four corners the way you want to. But adding in that extra piece just makes me feel a little safer when I'm working with my bits because I don't want to damage my expensive bits. But the dovetail clamps make this sort of jig and fixture holding very, very simple. So, let's just check it out, see what people are saying there. But again, I don't really have the time to be looking at that. All right, one of the other things I want you to see, and if you'll give me a second, I'll roll it in here. I apologize, I meant to roll this in earlier, but here it is. So my drill press, has a new table on it. And I did this table, it was actually the latest episode of Wood Academy TV, shows you how to build this table. And uh, the show is not only available for free, but the plans to build this table are free as well. And this table works ex uh, quite extensively with the dovetail system. So the first thing you'll notice is that the fence has a dovetail across the bottom which allows my clamps to hold it in place. And the reason I did that with the fence, over the years I've built a lot of these drill press tables. And I've put T-tracks and other things, slots and whatnot, in the tabletop itself in order to adjust the fence. And they always get filled with all of the stuff when you drill, which makes adjusting them very difficult. Here, I can adjust this because the clamps are gonna clamp to the edges of the table so I can adjust my fence to be wherever I need it to be, bring the clamp up, lock it in place, and now my fence is fixed. I also have a stop here because I have a groove across the face of the fence, so I can use a stop with the dovetail hardware, or if I want to hold the part in place, I can slide the clamp in, and I can work that way as well, using the clamp to actually hold the part that I want to drill. So I've got both options here. And you'll notice that on the table itself, we've got dovetail grooves going this way, so I can hold the parts down on the table if I need to. So this is all based around the dovetail clamp system. But there's a surprise here as well. If we loosen the table, if you ever need to drill anything vertically, from the top down, like the end of a flag or a lamp post. Whoops. I'll lower that bit. Actually, we'll take this out of the way. By loosening the collar in the back, rotating the table out and around, notice I've got a vertical fence here with dovetails in it that I can then clamp a part to for drilling vertically. And again, my dovetail clamps can slide straight in here and hold that part for me while I'm drilling. 
So really, anywhere I want to hold things and control things, anywhere I can plow that dovetail groove, I've got the ability to put the dovetail clamp in place. Uh, somebody once told me, or mentioned to me that, you know, we were talking about different clamps that this replaces and how we were in competition, or microjig would be in competition with various types of clamps, and they're not. The dovetail clamps really aren't competitive, or a direct competitor, I should say, to any particular clamp. The real thing that they're a competitor to is T-Track, the extruded aluminum T-Track. I don't have to worry about buying extruded aluminum T-Track anymore. The dovetail bits will work wherever I want them to. Now, let's talk about the dovetail bits for just a minute here. And I've got a few of them hanging around. Here's one. And here's one. And here's one too. So, any half inch wide, 14 degree dovetail bit will cut the proper slot to fit our clamps. We designed it that way because we didn't want to force people to buy a special bit just to make, just to use our clamps. And it is a very common profile. Every manufacturer makes this bit, which is why we decided to use it. And I'll just give you an example. That one's from Freud. That one's from Woodcraft. This one is from Irwin. And I bought it at Lowe's, I believe. So anywhere you can get that bit, that will help you make those cuts. However, we do produce our own version of the bit. And there's a reason for that. So it's the same half inch, 14 degree dovetail bit. However, at the 3 8 mark, which is the depth of the cut we want you to make, we have a round over cut into the carbide. So when you cut the dovetail groove, instead of having this top edge here very sharp, that round over actually rounds that edge over for you. And here's what I tell people when they ask me. If I'm going to be cutting a dovetail groove once in a blue moon, there's no need to buy the microjig bit. However, if you're going to be making a lot of dovetail grooves, and frankly, I make them all the time, then this bit works out. We have this bit in both half inch shank and quarter inch shank. And we also have our relief bit, which has a similar round over at the top of the depth of cut. Now the relief bit, for those of you who don't know, anytime you do an undercut with the router, whether it's a dovetail bit, our bit, or any other dovetail, or let's say a T-slot bit, or something of that nature, whenever the cutting area is wider than the opening that the chips can go out of, like in a groove like this, you always want to cut a relief groove first because A, it's going to remove a lot of the waste that's in the slot, which means that when this bit is cutting the wider area underneath, the chips have less of an issue escaping from the groove that you're cutting. So you're not regrinding them, you're not overstressing the bit, and most importantly, you're not going to burn the bit up with all that friction. Cutting the relief groove will give you cleaner cuts and give you a lot better bit life. And again, you can do the relief bit, the relief cut with the table saw. You can do the relief cut with the with a um, straight router bit, or you can do it with the micro jig bit. And what this does is it cuts the relief groove, but again, there's that little groove or notch at the top of the carbide at the depth of cut we want to make that helps to round over that top edge a little bit. It's gonna get cut away again, but it will have uh, less tendency to tear out because of the round over that's at the top. And again, this bit is available in half inch and quarter inch shanks. Um, by the way, they're both also available, for those of you that have European equipment, in eight millimeter shanks. So that's available as well. The bits are an extra cost unless you order them during this 
project using the code that Morgan is giving you in the chat. In that case, if you buy two pairs of our dovetail bits, uh, sorry, dovetail clamps, you can order the, you can get the bit for free. It's a thirty dollar value. It's well worth doing. So, let's take a look at another thing that I've been playing with. I don't have my table saw set up, but this is a mortising uh, uh, tenon and jig that I built for the table saw. Now, this uses the zero play guide bar on the bottom to ride in the miter slot of my saw. It uses the dovetail and hardware to adjust the positioning of the shoulder cuts left to right relative to the blade. And it has two dovetail grooves across the face, one of which holds the part. The other one of which, the reason I put two on here, was to be able to hold a backer. The vertical cleat that I mounted to the jig is up above where the blade would normally cut. Adding the backer as a separate piece, first of all, allows me to have a backer that's the exact same thickness as my part if I need to, or thinner, but it also allows for changing that backer out pretty regularly when it gets chewed up, which it will. Once a backer gets chewed up, it's no longer a backer. So now I can clamp both in. And the beauty part about having the dovetail clamps running horizontal, when I loosen these clamps to change parts between cuts, there's no risk of this bit or this uh, metal bar falling down onto my tabletop, which would cut in. Again, free plans or free measured drawings to make this tapering jig, uh, tenon and jig for your table saw are available on the Woodcademy website, and that's woodcademy.com. Wood Academy, take the A out of the middle, woodcademy.com. You can find all of this stuff there. All right. What else did we want to talk about while we were here? We've got, oh, just a few minutes left. Um, so, let me think about, is there anything else I wanted to look at while we were here? Oh, yes. Yes, there is. For those of you who want to upgrade your factory miter gauge that came with your table saw, again, in Wood Academy, um, Episode four from the current season number two, we build this auxiliary fence. But here's the cool part. The fence uses the dovetails and the dovetail hardware through the existing holes in my, miter, my factory miter gauge. So I can adjust this fence side to side and lock it in place when I need to. I also use the same setup with this is just a scrap board, just a piece of plywood with the dovetail groove in the same spot. And I put a backer here that where the blade will go through. But this allows me to do dados or mortises or any other cuts where I want to chew up my, my board. But again, I can cut a piece of plywood, put the dovetail groove in it, and just chew this up. Let it get used up and, and chewed up without damaging my existing fence system as needed. And I can always throw this away when I'm done and just make a new one by ripping a piece of uh, plywood and putting the dovetail groove in it. So from building workstations to jigs and fixtures around your shop, anywhere you can put the dovetail groove, you can add a plant board. You're no longer stuck screwing things in buying T-Track, any of that. It's all available to you now because of the dovetail system. I'm a jig and fixture maker from way back, and this is the system I've been looking at for a long time. So I'm really glad to see it here. So for those of you who have attended here, thank you very much. Morgan, appreciate you being there on the chat, backing us up. My name is Ralph Bagnall. My website is woodcademy.com. This is the MicroJig Facebook page. And again, for those of you that have participated, make sure you get that code out of the chat to get your free bit when you order two pairs of dovetail clamps. That's only for people who are in the chat while it's going live. If you're watching this after Monday at 5.30, sorry, that, that ship has sailed. I'm Ralph Bagnall again for Woodcademy. 
Thank you for being here. Have a great week, and we'll see you at the next slide.